Hello, my name is Mark Colley. I'm with Caitlin Clunan here today, and we are members of the government contracts practice at Arnold and Porter. We're presenting you another in our series of video casts on contract contracting issues, and we want to talk today about sequestration and what's coming in January, what to expect and how to prepare. We're going to talk a little bit about the background of sequestration, but mostly we're going to talk today about the impact on federal contractors. There are going to be some things that may come from sequestration about which you're simply going to have to get ready to deal with the consequences, but there are also some things that are going to be uh, happening for which you may have a remedy. There's been an awful lot of heat about the sequestration process. We want to try and shed a little light on what contractors can do to prepare and protect themselves from what's coming. Well, before we get to the light, we're going to talk a little bit about the source of the heat. And not surprisingly, it's Congress during the summer season. Um, sequestration uh, was not intended ever to be a final budget solution. It was actually supposed to drive an outcome, and it was actually supposed to be uh, the source of reduction in costs. But uh, right now, there's a protracted debate in Congress, and absent further congressional action, there's going to be a series of uh, initial cuts that are going to hit in January 2013, roughly about $100 billion. Um, there's many exemptions for large mandatory programs, but uh, make no mistake, this is going to affect everybody if it happens. When I say that it's going to affect everybody, it's going to start bringing new fiscal realities. Uh, sequestration is going to force some dramatic action by agencies and contractors alike. Uh, federal agencies are going to be forced to reprioritize, and contractors are going to have to figure out how to do even more with even less and should probably be proactive to protect themselves. Right now, sequestration planning um, is very uh, nascent, let's just say. Government representatives have indicated that they don't have specific plans for sequestration or are not going to share them with the public. So without a formal public plan, contractors are kind of left on their own. Uh, they're not getting any help, and so we wanted to offer some suggestions how to go forward. One of the things that has been talked about in the press a lot has been whether contractors are going to have to issue early warnings to their employees that they may be laid off as a result of contract terminations. In fact, that's a suggestion that we view with some skepticism and hope you will do so as well. The Warren Act requires early layoff notifications, but there are exceptions in that act for circumstances that are beyond the foreseeable, they're not reasonably foreseeable, and there's some ex precedent to suggest that that's going to be the case for a contract termination. If there are actions outside the employer's control that cause the uh, plant closure or layoff consequences. So actually issuing a Warren Act notice now may not be the most conservative or risk-free approach. In fact, it may have consequences that you don't want to pursue as a strategic matter, given the fact that once employees get the layoff notice, they may decide to just jump ship then. And that's going to affect your current contract performance. It may affect the state of your workforce for pursuing new work down the road. So you need to give some careful consideration about the strategic business consequences of making that move, as well as consulting with your contract and labor employment uh, professionals. So we've heard a lot about the WARN Act, and that's something that's coming up right away. But there's going to be long-term effects if sequestration actually happens. One of those uh, effects will be more disputes. And in this, uh, in this atmosphere of heightened budget pressures, contractors far and wide have already noticed that there's been an uptick in uh, disputes and that uh, there have been other actions the government may take to, uh, to bring uh, investigations, audits, suspensions. And this may just escalate further in the coming months. Uh, in addition, with few funds available, uh, performance issues that were ordinarily just routine contract administration issues are probably going to lead now more likely to litigation. Another ripple effect consequence if the government is terminating a lot of contracts, there's going to be changing the contract mix. And changing that contract mix is going to have effects on your cost accounting practices systemically within your company. The different mix and volumes of contracts can impact your indirect rates, can in fact how you're going to allocate your home office and other overhead rates across your company. But also individual contracting activities are going to have contract cost accounting issues, uh, segment closure adjustments, uh, facilities costs, uh, idle facilities charges, compensation impacts in terms of severance to employees. The, the mix of events, because there may be so many different contracts adjusted all at the same time, uh, could have an impact on the pricing that you're able to put forward for future contract work as well as having a lot of compliance repercussions. So this is going to be a time as these contract changes uh, uh, transpire where the cost accounting systems are going to have to be given special attention. 
As Mark just said, we really don't know what's happening here. We don't know what sequestration will do. We do not know what will occur. However, um, we do know that agencies have various tools and always have to um, change contract obligations and de-scope work. It really largely depends on the type of contracts and the individual facts. So for prospective contracts, agencies have broad rights and always have had broad rights to cancel solicitations, to decline to exercise options, or not allocate additional funding. And that's for your future contracts. For those of you who have current contracts, agencies retain a lot of flexibility and can reduce contract scope, they can cancel multi-year performances, they can suspend or delay performance, they can opt not to purchase as much, they can just purchase the minimum on an IDIQ type contract, or they can choose not to renew certain programs. And all of these are tools that the government commonly use, but you may see uh, increasingly during sequestration. The other question of this is uh, a delay in sequestration, whether or not these contracts will be protracted because the government hasn't decided what to do. Excusable delays are a common occurrence in contracts, and it's a remedy that the contractors have often availed themselves of. And one of the far examples of a delay that is excusable are acts of the government in its sovereign or contractual capacity. And one would think that sequestration would be one of those sovereign acts that might be excusable under the contract. The second one would be a compensable delay. A compensable delay means you not only get time, you get money, and you can get compensated for this delay. Again, the FAR uh, includes contractual uh, government actions, and since this is a contractual government action, one would think that, that you would actually get reimbursed for these. We note that all of these circumstances are highly specific to each type of contract and highly specific to the facts, but it is important to think about as you go forward to think if you can recover for any of these delays. One of the other things to keep in mind is, in addition to your remedies and ish concerns with your federal government contracts is your supply chain and subcontract contracting community. Uh, most contracts will have some sort of a force majeure clause, but you shouldn't make assumptions about what they automatically provide for in terms of the obligations that they may or may not excuse you from. Ordinarily, they will deal with protecting you from performance uh, for unforeseen circumstances, and ordinarily there will be language in there that goes beyond simply dealing with acts of God. It's not just hurricanes, but it's things that are beyond your reasonable control. One would hope and expect that kind of language would operate in a situation like this where the government has swooped down and terminated a bunch of your contracts or changed your performance capabilities. But be sure to not assume what your protections are. Go back and study that contract language and be sure that you've got protective measures in place to deal with your own obligations downstream once the government's performance of your, con your, the, your own performance of the government contract uh, is drawn into question or changed. What can we recommend that you do now? We've identified some of the remedies that you may have and some of the risks that you face. Some of the things that you can do uh, are to continue your contract performance. There's been a lot of discussion out there in the media about contractors considering a, a premature, a, a preemptive uh, scale back or reduction in their performance. That may be a higher risk proposition than actually bailing you out somewhere. Your contract obligations are going to continue until the contracting officer tells you otherwise. Be sure you are maintaining your key personnel, performing against your milestones, meeting your delivery schedules, because the key here is that you have not been excused from your contract performance. One thing to consider would actually would actually be going to your contracting officer and raising the question about whether or not sequestration ought to be something that would cause a change in your contract performance. And of course, you know, with any contract, we recognize that the different contracting officers proceed differently, but it's worth a try to ask the question and see if maybe or not you can get on record that the agency does wish you to continue to perform. That may be a nice piece of uh, information to have in your file down the road if there's a later termination and the contracting officer has instructed you not to stop your performance. The key here is not to give the government an excuse to terminate your contract for default or for cause based on a reduction in performance that wasn't ordered because that's something the government doesn't have to pay for, unlike the remedy that you have available under a termination for convenience. Another recommendation is to assess your contract requirements, and that is actually a daunting task if you have a lot of contracts, but we recommend it highly, mostly because you don't really know what sequestration is going to bring. So one consideration is to look at whether or not your options in the, uh, are going to conflict with sequestration's coming timeline. Look at your prime and subcontract mix. Subcontracts with large primes who have core mission essential functions um, may be less risky than a prime contract on a smaller, less mission critical program. Uh, look at your forward pricing rate agreements 
experience. As Mark mentioned before, the pricing of this becomes highly sensitive as um, programs are reduced. So your forward pricing rate agreements could be affected, your award fee could be affected. All of these things are going to be uh, largely determinative on how you get paid. So looking at this as less of just an academic exercise is to make sure that you have protections in place. The other thing to do is to look at prospective bid and proposal schedules. Uh, everybody knows that they look for that next big contract and what's going to be the next big win to bring them uh, revenues. Uh, as uh, budgets are increasingly pressured, um, non-mission essential contracts might not be uh, let and solicitations may be delayed and their uh, agencies may have broad uh, discretion to cancel pending solicitations. Uh, some of this work also may just be insourced to the government and it also may just be extended to the current contractor. So there's no promise that contracts that you think will be there tomorrow are actually going to be there. So make sure you have options in place to protect so it, yourself. It really may be a time to rethink your competitive strategy in that marketplace. Absolutely. This is the time to do it and to look at the at, at options ahead, different options. Um, another recommendation would be to prepare to mitigate for some serious financial consequences. Um, there's always disruptions in cash flow for contractors to consider and those risks and contractors having heavy debt loads are going to really face significant risk. So invoice the government now for any accounts receivable. Where possible, uh, make sure that your record keeping is up to date. You want to prepare for those termination for convenience claims in the event that they arise. And where possible, you can start to prepare claims and get your people ready to submit uh, documentation. Um, one other consideration. The line may be long, I take it. The line will probably be long. Um, and so at this point, one other option is to maybe proactively talk to the uh, contracting officer whether there's options to descope um, the, the work that you're presently performing. And so you may be able to uh, negotiate a less painful descope of your contract if you are proactive about it with your contracting officer. Another uh, recommendation here is that, uh, that is one that all business people pursue, which is uh, obviously uh, find the best way to make the best uh, business judgments possible. And during this tumultuous time, there's going to be really hard decisions, and the bottom line is to just act with careful deliberation. You want to enlist your best resources, both within your organization and outside your organization. So this is highly important. We know that we've given you a lot to think about today, and we welcome any questions you may have. Good luck. Good luck. administration process, we want to try and shed a little light on what contractors can do to prepare and protect themselves from what's coming. Well, before we get to the light, we're going to talk a little bit about the source of the heat, and not surprisingly, it's Congress during the summer season. Um, sequestration uh, was not intended ever to be a final budget solution. It was actually supposed to drive an outcome, and it was actually supposed to be uh, the source of reduction. Start bringing new fiscal realities. Uh, sequestration is going to force some dramatic action by agencies and contractors alike. Uh, federal agencies are going to be forced to reprioritize, and contractors are going to have to figure out how to do even more with even less, and should probably be proactive to protect themselves. Right now, sequestration planning um, is in costs, but uh, right now there's a protracted debate in Congress, and absent further congressional action, there's going to be a series of uh, initial cuts that are going to hit in January 2013, roughly about $100 billion. Um, there's many exemptions for large mandatory programs, but uh, make no mistake, this is going to affect everybody if it happens. When I say that it's going to affect everybody, it's going to start. Hello, my name is Mark Colley. I'm with Caitlin Clunan here today, and we are members of the Government Contracts Practice at Arnold and Porter. We're presenting you another in our series of video casts on contract, contracting issues, and we want to talk today about sequestration and what's coming in January, what to expect and how to prepare. We're going to talk a little bit about the background of sequestration, but mostly we're going to talk today about the impact on federal contractors. There are going to be some things that may come from sequestration about which you're simply going to have to get ready to deal with the consequences, but there are also some things that are going to be uh, happening for which you may have a remedy. There's been an awful lot of heat about the sequestration.